This is Falcon 40B Instruct. It's the best open source LLM that's out there. In fact, it's attempting to enter one of the hardest styles of prompting right now. I'm gonna show you how to use it in 12 minutes. I took a deep dive into the world of free and open source large language models to find Falcon toppling leaderboard. But is this hype real? I'm going to put it to the test against the three billion parameter model and Falcon's baby brother. To find out. But before we get to that, what makes Falcon 40B so special? Well, first and foremost, it's the best open source model around. It's topping the Hugging Face LLM leaderboard, outperforming Llama, Dable LM, and even MPT, the model that we dug into in the open source LLM video. But the real kicker, it's licensed under Apache 2.0, which means it's free for commercial use. Y Combinator about to get an influx of new AI guys. To get started first, we need to install some dependencies. The most important being PyTorch. You can grab the install command from the PyTorch website. Here we're going to install with CUDA 11.7. That way we can run Falcon on a GPU. I'll come back to the fun that I had getting that up and running a little bit later though. While we're at it, we're also gonna install Langchain, Inops, Accelerate, Transformers, and Bits and Bytes. Now that we've got a bunch of stuff installed, it's time to import them. From Langchain, we're gonna import Hugging Face Pipeline, Prompt Template, and LLM Chain. I put this on two lines for aesthetics. These are going to allow us to use the Falcon LLM as part of a Langchain powered app. The most important class being the Hugging Face Pipeline class, which will eventually pass our LLM too. Then from Transformers, we're going to import Auto Tokenizer to convert our prompts to tokens and Auto Model for Causal LM, the class required for generating blocks of text from language models. While we're at it, we're going to import the Transformers base class so we can make a pipeline a little later. I also imported OS and Torch. Full disclosure, I forgot to delete the OS import when I was recording this. Treat it like practice. To test if we've got PyTorch successfully compiled for a GPU, we can run torch.cuda.is available. If it returns true, you're golden. This brings me to the GPUs though. In order to get this bad boy running, I had to run the code using some beefy as hell hardware, namely two A180 gigabyte GPUs, which cost a casual $27,000 each. Hence why I ate Shin Ramen and tap water for the last eight days. They ask you how you are, you just have to I ended up doing this on RunPod, which worked out to be roughly $3.38 US per hour. This is probably overkill, but while I was testing this, I got so many out of memory hours that I figured let's just overspec and get it over and done with. Plus it had the advantage that inference was extremely fast. I'll show that in real time a little bit later. Alrighty, now it's time to load up this bad boy. First, we define the model that we want to load, namely TIUAE Falcon 40B Instruct. We then need to load a tokenizer. Here we'll use the auto tokenizer from Transformers and pass it the model ID, then the big door. We'll load the model itself. To do this, we'll use the auto model for causal LM class from Transformers and use the from pre-trained method to load the model. Specifying the cache dir allowed me to save the model and direct where I wanted the weight saved to. Important if you're using a cloud instance where space is limited. We've also set a number of other keyword arguments, namely the data type, whether or not to trust remote code, device mapping, as well as the offload folder. Almost there now. We can then set the model to inference by calling model.eval and pass the model and the tokenizer to the Transformers pipeline. Through here, we can also specify sampling parameters parameters like top P, top K, number of return sequences, and the max length. Now, I don't know if you know this, but my favorite TV series is about a set of entrepreneurial sisters who end up becoming billionaires. Leon, the Kardashians. We can test out the pipeline with a question from that series. And we get a pretty passable result. Let's say that we wanted to throw this into Langchain though. You guys went a little wild when I asked if you wanted me to do it, so strap in, it's about to happen. First, let's set up a super basic prompt template and set the input variables to input and template to that input. Then create a new instance of the Hugging Face pipeline. We imported this from Langchain originally. To that, we'll pass our Transformers pipeline. And last but not least, we can stick it all together by passing the Hugging Face pipeline, LLM, and prompt template to the LLM chain and storing that in a variable called chain. I know, verbose. Then we can ask who Kim is again by passing a prompt to the chain.run method. And if we print out the response, Boom, not bad. Now, one of the biggest challenges that I face when prototyping this video is building a front end. Because you guys know I like building user interfaces so that anybody can go about using this. In the documents video and free LLM video, we streamlit to build a user interface. But because I was running this on RunPod, I couldn't easily build a GPU interface unless I wanted to go down the whole API route, which I didn't really want to do for this video. Mind you, as I'm writing this script, I realized that there's streamlit for notebooks. Ignore that for now, we're still gonna spice things up. Rather than using streamlit, I'm gonna go back to my roots with Gradio. Tinsel Gradio, it's a simple pip, install Gradio, then we can get building. The, the sick thing about Gradio is that you can build ML user interfaces that run inside of Jupyter Notebooks and they look pretty good. I actually show how to build scikit-learn UIs with Gradio and deploy them in my full stack course. I'll link below. We need a function that's going to trigger when a user submits a prompt. We'll define this as generate and pass through the prompt to it. We can then pass the prompt to our LLM chain using the run method and return that 
from the function. Home stretch. now let's channel our inner Tom Ford and make this look a little slick by adding a title and description. Then the final code block. This is where Gradio comes in. We can build a new Gradio interface using the gr.interface class. To it, we need to specify six keyword arguments. Fn is the function we call when a user submits a prompt. We'll set this to our generate function. Then we can specify our input and output types. Both of these will be text as we'll pass through the prompt as text and expect text back. Then set the title and description. And last but not least, at the style. Here I chose Finley McKinlan's Boxy Violet, but there's a whole bunch more available at the Gradio Gallery. To kick off the app, we can run the launch method. You can set the port by specifying server underscore port, but most importantly, set share equal to true to generate a shareable URL. And boom, that's the app Dunsky. Time to put it to the test. Data is ridiculously important. It's the lifeblood that powers AI. But have you thought about what's protecting your data? The thin white line between you and that AI super juice. Really, a lot of the time, it's not a hell of a lot more than a single password. That's gone and the data's gone. But you don't need to worry about that thanks to this video sponsor, NordPass Business. NordPass Business is built to help you manage and secure all your business passwords in a single unified collaborative place. Unlike me using I Love Pizza 42 for every service I have, it helps you generate strong and secure passwords. But even better, let's say you have shared team passwords to so SaaS solutions, servers, Git repositories, NordPass Business allows you to securely share them between those that need it. Ready to manage and secure your passwords with NordPass Business? Well, you can get yourself a three month free trial by heading on over to nordpass.com forward slash Nicholas Nord to get your free trial. Back to the video. So we have three tasks that we're gonna run the models through. Q&A, few shot sentiment analysis, and the hardest of them all chain of thought prompting a math problem. The first model up is Dolly 3B. It's the 3 billion parameter instruction train model based on Pythia 2.8, which was fine tuned by Databricks. Our Q&A test prompt is explain how Mr. Beast became famous. Running this against Dolly was a little lackluster calling out the Beast as a notorious criminal. Two stars here. It did call out that he was featured on the news and became very wealthy. So we'll give Dolly that. On to sentiment. Our prompt starts with an instruction to classify text into neutral, negative, or positive, and then has some examples. The last of which being, apart from the rock start, my holiday in the Bahamas was amazing. I chose this as it's a little tricky given the misdirection at the start of the phrase, but we did get back positive. Not bad, five stars. You might notice that there's a bunch of extra text being generated. We could cut this down easily by limiting the max number of tokens. And last but not least for Dolly, a math word problem using chain of thought prompting. I start out by asking it to think carefully and logically explaining the answer. Then have a few shots of examples to help it out. The main question at the end being, if I have seven potatoes and I turn one into mash, how many whole potatoes do I have left? The correct answer being six. The fascinating thing about Dolly is that it manages to initiate the right chain of thought identifying seven potatoes potatoes as the initial volume, then subtracting one for match. But then its math devolves into that of me and returns 6.86. Close, but only three stars for you. That's enough with Dolly for now. It's time to step it up with Falcon 40B's baby brother. Falcon 7B. It's a 7 billion parameter model trained by the Technology Innovation Institute in the UAE. I've been seeing a bunch of people achieving great results with this one after fine tuning for specific use cases. Fine tuning video next, anyone? Alrighty, Q&A, baby Falcon, let's go. Now keep in mind, I kept all of the sampling parameters the same across all of these models for a fair trial. Weirdly enough, it goes off the deep end, identifying Mr. Beast as creating songs, including the Piano Man and the game, as well as quoting his appearances in The Hangover. I have no doubt this would crush it if used in a retrieval augmented generation setting, but for now, 7B's out of the wolf pack. Two stars. Sentiment is a cakewalk and Falcon 7B correctly identifies the sentiment as positive. But when it comes to our potato problem, baby Falcon comes so damn close. It correctly formulates the expression and solves the equation, calculating seven minus one as six. But then it adds on a little too much sauce and does an extra step returning two whole potatoes remaining. Not bad again, three stars. Will Falcon 40B do better though? Will it be the infinity gauntlet to our Iron Man, the sunlight to our Superman, the family? To our Dom Toretto. Falcon 40B instruct incoming. Like Falcon 7B, it was also trained by the TII in the UAE. This model, however, has been topping the Hugging Face leaderboards. Even though it's taken me three weeks to edit this video, it's still been up there. Anyway, on to Q&A. This is the output. Mr. Beast is a YouTube personality and influencer from North Carolina who became famous by creating videos that involve giving away large sums of cash to random people, such as homeless people or individuals who need money for college or medical bills. His first viral video was, last to leave giant squid wins five thousand dollars in 2014 where he hid a giant squid costume and gave away cash to the last person to leave the room his videos have since amassed millions of views i think it's in the billions to be honest and subscribers and he has become a successful entrepreneur and philanthropist mr beast youtube channel is currently the seventh most subscribed channel in the world and has over 50 million subscribers is that right i'm pretty sure it's a bit more than that 
But anyway, that seems like a much better response compared to what we got from the last two. One of the unique features with Falcon 40B was that it was also trained on German, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, Polish, Dutch, Romanian, Czech, and Swedish texts. Mind you, it's still predominantly trained in English. That being said, I asked you guys in the community tab if you could translate the Mr. Beast question. Asking it to Falcon 40B, we get this. I don't think that's bad, guys. Mr. Beast, Jimmy Donaldson, est devenu célèbre grâce à... Yeah, so my French still needs a little bit of work. Give me a score out of 10 for that schmozzle of a sentence. Anyway, Falcon 40B seems to return a coherent response. This is me, yet again, trying to read this out to you. À sa chaîne, YouTube qui con environ... Mmm, yeah, nah. I'm going to say that's a 5 out of 5 for Q&A for now. What about sentiment? Interestingly enough, the model returns mixed as the sentiment. Whilst I wouldn't disagree with the fact that we maybe have mixed sentiment, we really wanted neutral, negative, or positive. Three and a half stars. But the real one we've been waiting for. Our mashed potato problem. None of the other models have nailed this yet. Will our flaming falcon be the one? Guys, I got it. As if that ab isn't absolutely amazing. So 7 minus 1 equals 6. I have 6 whole potatoes left. It smashed it. Considering this is an open source model, I think it is absolutely amazing. And I know the field of LLMs is moving ridiculously fast, but it banged it, guys. It got it. And that is five star worthy. Once again, thanks to NordPass Business for sponsoring this video. Get your three month free trial by heading over to nordpass.com forward slash Nicholas Nord. Thanks so much for checking out the video. What did you think of Falcon 40B Instruct? If you'd like to see me take on some other models and build a GPT investment banker, click here. Catch you later.